Hello everyone, this is TJ Gifford with the Lake City Church of Christ. I'm so very thankful that you chose to be with us for yet another study in the book of James. I would like to invite you to go ahead and take out your Bibles and be turning with us to James chapter 4. Again, that is James chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. James 4, 13. Now, if you've been joining us for our study of the book of James so far, you know that this is a new setting. This is a new place to record these messages. I wanted to mix it up a little bit, and so I came down to the church building, and I wanted to stand and teach. It's so much more comfortable for us preachers to stand and teach as opposed to sitting. Nevertheless, we're, in study, we're enjoying our study of the book of James so far, and I want to look at just a few brief verses here at the end of James 4 that really resonate with me and I think it's going to be very beneficial for us as human beings to consider the wisdom in these verses. The Bible says in James 4 beginning at verse number 13, come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a city spend a year there buy and sell and make a profit. Verse 14, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Verse 15, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Therefore, verse 17, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. There's so much to consider in this short paragraph or so from James 4. And let me just say that as we delve into considering what this passage has in store for us, it's very relatable because we all live in this world with various tasks and various responsibilities and various chores, and we all have to make plans in order to succeed at this life and, and, and do good. what the will of the Lord is. And he gives us a number of warnings here. The first of four points that I'd like to consider with you is what is stated in verses 13 and 14. And what he says in verses 13 and 14 in essence boils down to this point, and that is the unpredictability of life. You see, life is very unpredictable, isn't it? We can make all the plans we want to, we can make all the budgets we want to. The budgets will be broken. The plans will be altered. Surprises will happen. I'm uh, coming to you in this particular Bible class the day after 2020 election. And uh, whether you're listening to this immediately after these events or you're watching it sometime many weeks or months or years down the road, you may remember that we still didn't know who the President of the United States was going to be uh, almost 24 hours later. And and it may be much longer than that. And so there's many unpredictable things that happen in this life. This life cannot be fully predicted. I can't plan everything according to my preferences. And so he says this again in verse 13, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a city, spend a year there, buy, sell, and make a profit, whereas you do not know will happen. What will happen in your life tomorrow? Now, he's not discouraging making plans. He's not discouraging conducting business. But what he's reminding us of is that we don't have complete control over our future. Yes, we have choices. We have free moral agency. We have the freedom to choose for ourselves. But there are so many things in this life that are outside, uh, of, of, that are outside of things that we can choose. And so that's a noble reminder it reminds me of the unpredictability of life, not just on a day-to-day -day basis, but in a bigger way. For instance, in Matthew chapter 24, if we could turn there very quickly, we would be reminded that on that, that Jesus in his sermon was referring back to the days of Noah. And I want you to notice what Jesus says in the Olivet Discourse, 
In Matthew 24, beginning at verse number 37, he says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the, the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and uh, took them all away so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, I want to emphasize one point in particular there, and it is this, that in the days of Noah, yes, Noah was given advanced warning, and maybe Noah went about trying to spread that warning, but for most of humanity during the days of the flood, that rain drops and the floods and the great fountains of the deep and that universal flood that destroyed all living creatures, that would have been unexpected. That would have been a very unexpected turn in the normal events of their life. And I'm also reminded of this same passage here in Matthew 24, going back to that passage. And he says in Matthew 24, verse 36, But of that day, the day in which Jesus will come again, but of that day and hour knows no man. And if you drop down, he says that just like in the days of Noah, people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, living life the way they had always done, all of a sudden something tremendous happens. I'm coming to you in the year 2020. And sisters, ladies and gentlemen, if 2020 has taught us anything, it is how unpredictable life is despite we may put into motion and so the flood of Noah's days was an unpredictable thing an unpredictable experience and certainly one day if we live long enough and we see Jesus coming in the clouds with his mighty host of angels it, he will come as a thief in the night unex unexpectedly and certainly the Bible warns us of the unexpected appointment of death and certainly as it is appointed unto man wants to die, but after this the judgment, Hebrews 9.27, we know this through our earthly experience that even a young, healthy person can pass from this life without any warning. Life is very unexpected. And so that's the first observation going back to James chapter 4 that we are reminded of, and it's words of wisdom because if we're not careful, sometimes, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we can grow arrogant and start thinking that we fully, 100% control our own destiny, but God tells us through his word, remember, you can go into such a city, say we're going to spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, we can have plans to go to college, we can have plans to do all of this, but at the and, and for retirement and for vacations and for medical uh, procedures, at the end of the day, life is very unpredictable. That's observation number one. What's the application to that point? Of course, if life is unpredictable, take care of your relationship with God today. Th that's what I need to be reminded of. If life is so unpredictable as we see with our eyes and, and as we are warned in the scriptures, today is the day of salvation is what the Bible would say in, in the book of Corinthians. And, and also we would note that in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, when the preacher Ananias came to Saul and wanted to see him become a Christian, he said, why are you waiting? Today is the day because life is so unpredictable, don't let Satan convince us to have the mindset that says, I will make things right tomorrow. That's a dangerous proposition, ladies and gentlemen. Going back to James chapter 4, this time I want to look again at verse number 14 for a second observation. He says in verse 14, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, it's unpredictable. But he goes on to say, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We've all experienced putting a pot of water on top of a stove and seeing that water boil and seeing the steam rise. And as soon as the steam appears, we can't follow it very long before it disappears on us. And the idea, of course, is that in comparison to eternity, even a long life on this planet is but a vapor. It is a short time, and so observation number one is the unpredictability of life. But observation number two is the brevity of life. Life is indeed short. You go and talk to someone who has lived 75, 85, 95 plus years of age. 
And almost without fail, they will tell you, it seemed like it took me no time to get this age. Life is short. And, and folks, that's, just, that's not just a bad memory. That is a reality. Once someone has lived 80, 90, 100 years, they will say, yes, life in comparison to what I thought it would be is relatively short. The Old Testament on one occasion mentioned that if we can get 70 years out of this life, uh, anything more than that is just extra. And there's some degree in which we believe that is still a good uh, estimate of what a long, healthy life without accident or tragedy looks like. And uh, he, the Bible, of course, would warn us about taking advantage of the opportunities we have in this life. I don't know if I will live a long life, a life of longevity, or, or, or if I will live a life that will end relatively soon. I don't know that. My mother passed away at 42, my father at 57, my grandfather at, at 52. I have members of my family who've lived nearly a hundred years. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm breathing today. My heart is still beating today. My body's still functioning today. My mind is still working today. And so, as we said in the last point, today is the salvation. Today's the day to work on our marriage. Today's the day to train our children. Today's the day to commit to the Lord. Today's the day, the day to prepare for eternity. The Bible is warning us that life is short. Point number one, the unpredictability of life. Point number two, the brevity of life. In point number three, verse number 15, he reminds us of what our goal in life should be. And he says in verse number 15, if instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall do this or that. In other words, he's saying that yes, we will have plans. Yes, life will be uncertain. Yes, life is brief. But while you are living, don't forget to include the will of God in all of those plans. If it's the Lord's will, that's what I'm going to do. That's the decision I'm going to make. That's the direction that I will go. That's what he's saying. And of course, the, the Lord's will is emphasized throughout the New Testament as well as the Old. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but... He who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. That's what our Bible says. There's a fourth observation here in the text, verse number 16. He, and he goes on to say that there is a common problem in life that we need to be aware of. He says, he gives us point number one, the unpredictability of life. Point two, the brevity of life. Point three, the main goal we should have in life to serve the will of the Lord. Point number four, here's a common pitfall or a common problem. He says in verse 16, But now you boast in your arrogance. And all such boasting is evil. What he's telling me, what he's reminding me of, is that sometimes I put too much confidence in my freedom of choice. Sometimes I put too much confidence in my financial security. Sometimes I put too much confidence in my youth or my health or my mental sharpness. Sometimes I put too much confidence in my support system. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, God will take care of us. us. There's no doubt of that. But at the end of the day, may we not grow arrogant thinking that we know the future, we know how events will play out, thinking we th you know, one thing that the Bible warns us about is that when we ever develop the arrogance to think that we're just too good to fail, we're going to fail. What's the Bible? Lest you fall. Brothers and sisters. Now he ends with this note, and we'll call it the conclusion in verse 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and, to, and does it not to him, it is sin. This really fits back in to point number three, the goal of life. And the goal of life is to know the will of God, know what is good, and do it. He says in verse number 16 now, or verse number 15, instead you ought to say, if it is the will of God, we shall live and do this or that. It's not only important to know the will of God, verse number 15, but verse 15 and 16 also says, we must also actively be engaged 
in doing the will of God. Now, there's so much application that we can make, but I'll leave the lesson at this. At the conclusion of James 4, James is reminding us that yes, we will live this life and have plans and make events and, and just worry about the things of this earthly existence. Don't forget that life is unpredictable. Don't forget that life is brief. Don't forget the main goal of life is to do the will of the Lord. And don't forget that common pitfall is to be arrogant, thinking that we're more sure-footed than we really are. May we take heed so that we do not fall. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so very much for your attention. We invite you to come back and study with us next Wednesday, and we hope that you have a good week, and God bless.